guys, they'll let anybody buy a lab coat. Does this help you take me more seriously? So, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up some tubing today. So, you never worked with borosilicate tubing? This is ridiculous, I know. <clears throat> uh, so, you get, you know, tubing comes in five foot lengths. What the heck do you do from it, with it from there? Um, so I'm gonna show you how to put a blow tube on tubing, show you how to pull a point, and so that's what this video is all about. Um, how to get started with some tubing. And that you can have a lab coat if you want one too. Let's go do it. Okay, so here we are. I've got two full lengths of clear Cymax tubing. So we've got the larger 44 by 2 millimeter, which would be medium wall, and the smaller blow tube size is 9.5 millimeter by 3, so that's heavy wall. And you get these big these big lengths and the first thing you need to do is split them in half and you can do that cold with cutters like I'll show you soon um, in most cases just uh, flame cutting them whether you're gonna attach a blow tube or pull a point is going to be the first step and with this blow tube I'm showing you right now <clears throat> talking about you know the Cymax I'm not sure about other two I usually use Cymax uh, the ends are fire polished when you get them um, and so I'm going to show you I'm going to break this blow tube into four pieces here I'm just showing you a larger piece you know if you use if you're working with larger tubing like 50 mil and up then a larger blow tube is going to be nice uh, something like 11, 11 to 12 millimeter is the next size up for a little bit more sturdy blow tube. So I've got a carbide scoring tool and just kind of give it a score and turn and then wet the crack, put your thumbs on either side of the score, pull apart while you bend it back. And I actually got a, that was a really bad score on that one. My tool is pretty old. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're just breaking this down, split it up into four pieces and that gives you a pretty good size blow tube to work with, you pull apart and snap those. And I'd usually do this at my bench with the fan on because anytime you score and snap any glass, it makes a little bit of glass dust and so when I'm breaking stuff down like this I usually always just do it at my bench with the fan on and these are a pair of jaws uh, that, that's like a nice rotary scoring tool I usually you just use those now I just wanted to show you the scoring tool the carbide blade <clears throat> so we've got these four tubes um, two of them are already going to have a fire polished end you know, stock end, uh, then you we want to go and fire polish the other ones so that they all have one fire polished end, which will be the business end that you will either, you know, stick the boot of your blow hose on or use your mouth to blow on. So you want that to be fire polished and you want to do this ahead of time so they have time to cool down before you are... Uh, putting it anywhere near your mouth. So I'm just talking about laying them down with the hot end away from you. Just a quick, quick it, turn in and out, get those fire polished. Don't have to get too carried away. And if you know, you go in, the, those cut ends sometimes like to crack and uh, you can just 
knock it off and fire polish. So hot ends away. Okay, so then we pick up this. And so, yeah, I'm talking about how you can cut that with the, you can cut big tubing with those jaws. You can go pretty, you know, cut up to 50, 70 if you're brave enough. Um, but in most cases, I would just flame cut too because I'm either, in most cases, I'm either going to pull a point or attach a blow tube. And so uh, if you just go and break stuff down with jaws, then you have to, you know, uh, melt the end closed anyway, unless you're attaching a tube with a flare on it. And yeah, so uh, most of the time I'm just breaking the tube down with the flame. And then you just can go, if you go in turning, you can just go right into that flame. And as long as you don't heat up one side and not turn it, you, you know, usually will be just fine. Uh, the Cymax, that's all, in, it's, you know, annealed. And <clears throat> as long as you go right in there and turn in, then uh, you won't have problems with cracking. So once you have that split, then kind of just want to, you, you know, you kind of will end up with a thin end there so you want to thicken it up so that the the shoulder and that transition from the straight side of the tube down to that point is an even thickness that way you don't have a thin area between the blow tube and the rest of the tube because that shoulder is the main control point for that, that little transition that goes from the straight side of the tube down to where it connects to the blow tube, that part is what you are using to control the whole rest of, you know, the center section of glass. So having that just be at least the same thickness, if not just slightly thicker, uh, is kind of what you're going for. And then I've got my diamond shears there, and you can just kind of heat up that little end. And when you use the diamond shears, you want to kind of come in slow and turning, and then just can kind of tap that off. If you come in too fast with the diamond shears, you'll just pinch it closed, and you'll end up having to do it, over, pull it out, and do it over again. So uh, you kind of want a sort of stiff taffy consistency before you really start squeezing down on those diamond shears or are you just gonna pinch the opening close and then when you tap it off you won't have a hole and I just got a little hexagonal reamer just to round out that hole and get it uh, I'm gonna hole a little bit for the 9.5 tube you know like a oh, 12 you know about a 12 millimeter hole because we're gonna flare the end of one of these pieces of tubing uh, just a little bit just to kind of help with that transition in diameter I'm just using tungsten tweezers here use the tip of jacks or a you know a really small like pencil sized graphite to make that flare you could use a brass triangle reamer yeah um, and so for these half length these big half length sections you don't need rollers but it's comfortable uh, to do it this way so you can focus on then you can focus on your your left hand or right whichever hand has the blow tube I do this kind of uh, backwards compared to a lot of people that so you just have to figure out what's comfortable for you which hand you hold what in then you just want to put a lot of heat on that edge those two edges only um, and kind of come in 
and then just give a little pull. Um, you can plug the end of the larger tube up with a cork or you know you can have one end closed so that you you can blow in and blow out that seal a little bit um, uh, you can get away without doing that though what's most important with this this connection uh, between the blow hose and the larger tube is that seat it's really important that that seal doesn't have any undercuts that it's just a good seal uh, if you have any undercuts on the inside of the tubing you know it'll look like you you have to look closely at it um, if you have undercuts inside that's a really likely to crack next time you go to heat it up uh, just like any seal in any part of your process uh, if it's not fully fully fused, both you know the outer and inner wall, then it's bad news. Unstable, acute angles are where cracks start. <clears throat> so we're just going in with a lot of heat in this smaller flame because I want to just constrict this down. So this is like if you're attaching blow tubes and then the process is to heat this one area and get this constriction so that you actually thicken as you really slowly kind of pull these apart. Um, and so that way you're controlling that wall thickness all the way down to the tip of each of these terminations and then you'll be all set for the next blow tube attachment if you just rip them apart you're gonna have to clean that up anyways and so now this one has this nice attachment for a seven mil handle you know if this is what I would do for the next step on that for most shaping and then the other length of tubing is ready to pop open and repeat this process again. So now I'm just doing some flame annealing, pointing at the seal, talking about how that needs to be good. If you have a bad seal there, you either want to come and fix it or just keep work, you know, go ahead and just start on making whatever it is you're going to make. Because if you let this cool down like I'm going to and then try to heat it back up, you know, or you can stick it in the kiln, you know, you can garage these. That's perfectly fine. Stick, you know, you could just stick this in your lamp working kiln and then pull it out and start up on it. Mostly just saying if you were prepping these, prepping up a number of these for, you know, planning on making a few of the same thing or just trying to get some, some blanks prepped for whatever. Um, and you don't want to take up space in the kiln, then you got your wood block with the holes drilled there and So now, uh, say you have a tube like this and you want to pull a point for if that's what suits you. You kind of just get this hot and I've got that seven mil solid handle and I'm just pulling this uh, end on center to give a a centered attachment point. And if you were just pulling point, planning on pulling points out of the tubing from the get go, then instead of splitting it like I did, you would split and pull that first. As you split the tube, the first uh, pull would be like a, you know, the thin point handle, and then you would melt that in the middle 
and then that would give you two point handles, you know, one on either end of each half of the tubing, and then you could just start pulling points off of that. Um, yeah, I kind of, some things I like to pull points for, uh, more lightweight things, the point, it, it's, I'd like to avoid pulling points nowadays, um, that's how I used to do everything, but it creates more waste because if you don't find ways to use those point handles it's a lot of scrap that you end up having to toss um, they are really light weight though and have a little bit different feel so <clears throat> yeah I don't the argument over points versus blow tubes it's just there's just trade-offs there's pros and cons and points can be more dangerous if you don't pull them thick enough and are heavy-handed with them. You can break them, cut yourself, and all that. And so, I mean, uh, working with fire and glass is dangerous. So, uh, have to uh, kind of just pay attention. Be careful, you know, use your best judgment. So I'm just kind of straightening this. When you, whenever you have a, uh, you know, a blow, a blow tube or a point handle and you're trying to straighten it up, you put that heat on that shoulder just where it starts, where the straight tube starts to transition down. Um, and then just move that area on center. If you put too much heat towards the blow tube and try and straighten it there, it isn't going to work out so well. And then for this next one, just heat it all up like this. Heat up about one and a half times the diameter of the tubing, wide. Just can flame cut that there and you know leave yourself enough for the next pull. And you can score and snap these ends open like this. Fire polish. That's one way to open a point handle. Blow and cool that down. I don't think I fire polished that. <clears throat> and then just straighten it up, heat up this shoulder. This thing, this one's a little off. But... Then you come into that smaller flame and kind of constrict, make a little bit thicker constriction between the blank and the point handle. That's going to help give you a more stable control point so that any uh, any any of the heat that's you know sh sprays off when you're working the center body you have a little bit more of a buffer be between that and the point handle yeah don't get the point handle hot you don't want any of that to move <laughs> I, yeah, I, I talked to the camera while I was doing this and decided to do the voiceover after the fact because <clears throat> the fan's just loud in the workshop.
second verse, same as the first. And, you know, take your time. Uh, everything, you know, every, uh, it's only s strong as its weakest link kind of thing where if you don't take the time to true up your uh, blank, then that's, you know, those, uh, those issues are just going to ripple down the, the chain of events when you're creating and you'll, you'll, you know, if you start on center, then your job, then your job is to keep it on center. If you start off center, then you're just going to be struggling the whole way. Obviously that's, you know, easier said than done, but important to say. Mm, little flame kneel. This medium wall stuff is really tolerant. It, you know, it's only, it's just over two millimeters thick. So, uh, it's pretty easy to bench cool. It just flame kneel and bench cool. I use this stuff for uh mostly most, mostly like vessels and wine glasses this 44 by 2 is what i use for wine glass tops I use it for feet too you know i used to use 25 by 4 for feet for whatever reason i just is what I it, it's more the, the it's closer to the size that you want for a foot but uh, yeah you can just pull a smaller section of this 44 and use that for the foot but that's kind of what I do now <laughs> I think I was using the heavier wall, smaller diameter tubing, just because the thicker stuff. Uh, just a little bit easier to control with the foot, but it ended up blowing it out, you know, to the same thickness as this stuff, anyways. So, yeah, I just switched over. I don't know what I'm talking about <clears throat> in the video. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So yeah, basic tools for this. Uh, those are all the things that you need to get started with some pieces of tubing. So all of these steps apply regardless of what size tubing you're using. Um, I use a lot of like 19 millimeter diameter heavy wall tube, like 19 by four. And, uh, yeah, and I, I'll pull points on that sometimes, but also for, for beads and things, I'll at, attach below tubes also. So yeah, there you go. <laughs>
Thank you. 